What was a motivational factor for you growing up? Who inspired you? Was it like a self-inspiration? You want to get out of the situation? Yes. Because that was how, that's how that's I was. It. Like, I was like, look, I, I, I need to get out of I this situation. Yeah. I need to go off and I need to do my own thing and, yeah. you know, try to make something of myself. I got a lot of homeboys back at, you know, back at the crib that's, they ain't doing much of anything. Yes. And it's sad, but at the same time, I don't want to be in that position, yes. right? And I say, oh, I want to win that fight. Yeah, yeah, don't put your need. You want to win that fight. I say, yeah, I like that. And when I, just that little change. That little switch. The little switch, it helped me big time that yeah. I was on that fight. So confident I was going to be that guy. And that was my first UFC knockout. Speaking like, of, let's, let's talk about your wife. Yeah. She's we, also. She's a warrior, She's also bro. a badass talk, too, now. Nah. Yeah, she fought MMA before I, me. I know. So my wife. She fought, so she, 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 she fought. Sure. She was fighting grown men when she was doing Taekwondo. Her dad put her in because like like you said it the thing he got got to defend herself and yes. like they started out when she was like 5 4 or 5 like she she was in it right away Booster takes off and goes the distance for the touchdown What place would y'all rather be right now man come on Let's be great today man Come on Let's over I'm going to have my barbecue like, over there. Let's do it. I like the place. Oh, yeah. Like I know you got. do. You get you. Yeah. Hey, I was the reason. You was the reason why I got one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got, I saw you, you like, on it every morning. I'm like, every morning. I need to get one. Training. Yeah. And that, that's nice. Yeah. The morning. Yeah. I just get you going. Relax and get you going. I'm so. happy that I got you. Yeah. Doing you it. got me on one. I was like, yeah, I do it. I was like, I'm trying to be like my dog. I'm trying to be a badass. <laughs> but I'm trying to get right. You are. That was a crazy game. Yeah, I want to go. I'm. I'm going. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Raheem Moster, host of Relentlessly Motivated, presented by Mercury. Super excited to bring this show to you guys. We're going to have weekly episodes featuring athletes, business professionals, and anyone that's overcome odds to achieve greatness. Check us out on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Really appreciate your guys' support, and enjoy the show. Before we get into the pod, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's show, Manscaped. For me, it's all about looking good, feeling good, and playing good. And the way that I make sure that I'm looking good up top and down below is with Manscaped. Trust me, I've had raving reviews. And it all starts with the performance package. It comes with a beard trimmer, a groin trimmer, some things that get you smelling nice downstairs, and even two free gifts. And I've got you an exclusive offer. Head to manscaped.com right now and use my code MOTIVATED20 for 20% off plus free shipping. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com with code MOTIVATED20. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. What up, guys? I'm Gilbert Burns, and this is the Relentless Motivated Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's Raheem Moster, the host of Relentlessly Motivated, and I have the pleasure the honor, the distinction of having a superstar, a fan favorite down here in South Florida, down here in Miami, Gilbert Burns, ladies and gentlemen. Man, let's gotta oh clap God. it up. Gotta clap it up. What's up, Gil? How oh you God. doing, bro? Doing great, brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you coming, man. It's for uh, sure. it's definitely an honor. Like I said, we met last year and, and man, you just been hitting it off, huh? Yeah, no, it was crazy. I went to a couple games, we went to the fights. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. Kids I was still crazy about you. It's nice. Yeah, I was down here in uh down here in Miami when we had the UFC fight when you were fighting Jorge. I thought that was the most impressive thing. You had a, a great outing that, that fight. And man, you know, I, I, I still can't believe, you know, the, the, the fans, they were, they were all like on both sides, you know, they wanted, they wanted Jorge and then they also wanted, wanted you, man. You know, can you talk about that a little yeah. bit? I knew it. I knew it. You know, whenever I was fighting Jorge Masvidal here in Miami, I knew I said, man, that card is going to be all against me. The guy's born and raised yeah. here in Miami. King of Miami, so many fights, those backyard fights. I knew I said, man, that one's going to be okay. But I still have a big Brazilian community here. 
But it got to a point, just I think just like you, I just liked it. I like yeah. it when it ain't against me. I just like, okay, I'm going to... My, one of my, for sure I want to win the fight, that's the number one, but I still want to win that crowd. So I'm going to put on a show that I'm going to steal the crowd at the end. So, yeah, and that happened. I, I mean, when it comes to crowd, right, yeah, especially in a, a NFL setting too, it's like crowd control and home field advantage t does take a, a huge role, you sure. know, in, in wins and losses. I mean, you know, we, last week we had just played uh, the Bills at their place. You know, and Bill's Mafia was crazy. I mean, I remember the the first snap. You know, I couldn't even hear Tua in the huddle. It was so cold, too, right? That no, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't no, that cold. No, 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 it wasn't that cold. It was a. Uh, it was. It was warm outside. It was still. Yeah, it was still sunny, and it was. It was a beautiful day, but um, the crowd was just crazy, though. Like it was. It was unbelievable, bro. Same. The same feeling how it was in Miami when you were fighting. I know that you know. Fans were booing you at times and, and stuff like that. But then they also loved you because, you know, you you are Mr. Miami now, um, you know. And the Brazilian ties is crazy. I didn't realize Brazilians love, like, South Florida sports. Like, it's like yeah, a thing down there. So many Brazilians here because we, we have the same... It is the same here. That it's hot, like in Brazil, it's yeah. humid. So the weather is just the same as in Rio and the whole coast in Brazil. So most of Brazilians that want to get out of Brazil, Miami, yeah. Florida is the first option. So in Deerfield, Pompano, Boca, Miami, we keep going. It's, <laughs> the Brazilian community is huge. Yeah, man. So yeah. I knew a, I knew a lot of Brazilians would be there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I went to I went to the Bahamas last off season, and I was fortunate enough to meet a lot of fans there. You know, that a lot of Dolphins fans, nice. and most of them were from Brazil too. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, wait, we're we're in the Bahamas, <laughs> and it's, it's Brazilian fans too. Oh, wow. So. The Brazilian network is just crazy. Like it's it's crazy. unbelievable. We we love the ocean. Yeah. And we love the sports. Yeah. Like the whole the whole Brazilian community we grow up a lot of soccer. Yeah. They even go crazy if I if I call soccer. They say, No, you cannot call soccer, you gotta call football. Football. That's that's what's football. That's American football. Soccer is football, so yeah. But they love that in Brazil. So every sport in a place that have the ocean, yeah. so many Brazilians. Oh, there. man. Heck, yeah. Well, look, I'm going to pop off with some questions, um, you know, and I know you probably got some questions as well, which I'd love to answer. But, um, you know, one of the biggest things um, for this podcast, you know, is, is called Relentlessly Motivated. And I know you being a UFC fighter, MMA fighter, you know, doing jujitsu and everything like that. Um, well, what is, like, a motivation for you when you go into fights like what gets your your mental right um before a fight like is, is it like a playlist is it like you know me and you talked about family right like for me family is everything i see my family in the stands and i get that extra that extra oomph to you know perform at a high level so what is that for you like what is what is your motivation to to do what you do so I got a lot of motivation to fight a lot of different ones, for sure. My family, a lot of Brazilian fans, I want to show them, like, the way. But to a fight, is is crazy, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I, when I have, when I'm going to a fight, and I know, especially now at the highest level, those guys are all very good, super tough. I need to get on a level the acceptance that I might get hurt, I might bleed, I might break something, and I still want to be able to fight, you know, to perform, because yeah. I think that I related with you guys a little bit, because whenever he's a freaking chaos, like you were saying, when you get all the way there in Buffalo and those fans that super loud that you cannot hear anything, that's the same thing that happened on the fight. Sometimes on the fight with Miles Vidal, the fight that I had with Shimaev here in Miami, in um, Jacksonville here in Florida, it got to a point that I was, that fight, it got to a point that I was hurt. Yeah. And I couldn't hear anything that was my coach was saying, no direction. And I was a little dizzy. And those moments, I have to accept that moment way before I, I, that moment happened. Yeah because I gotta be ready for those moments. 
and the motivation to be ready for these moments first of all is for me I do because like you you play because you like to play right, right. for sure we do for the family to provide for the family but the first thing is because I like to do I like to fight it's crazy to think about I like to beat those guys up <laughs> that's what I really I get paid for and I like to do but I do because I like very much I love what I do and I wake up every day wants to get better and wants to do it more I do to provide for my family to get a, a a, a amazing future for for my kids and my yeah. family and changing my family my parents in Brazil but changing the, the the a lot of things that get me going too I know I have the power and the platform to change so much perspective on those kids in Brazil mm -hmm. because the way I grew up in Brazil was so hard I'm still very happy. I grew up, I have an amazing growing up in Brazil. I was born and raised in Rio, in Brazil, but it was very tough. I'm yeah. still very happy, but I still acknowledge it that, like, that I got home and we get so many candles at home. And I say, why? Because they cut up the lights. We didn't pay the electricity oh, bill. Oh, man, yeah. And I kind of acknowledge it. I say, oh, okay, we didn't pay it. But that didn't make me go sad or something. I was just, oh, shit. But it still got me going. I still had a great time with, yeah. my, with my brothers. We grew up very hard a couple of times with theirs. I remember a couple of weeks we just oatmeal. We opened the, the refrigerator, oatmeal. That's it. That's all we have. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is going to be days for, for a week. And next week maybe was better, but then got back to that. So... Even with that, I was super happy. You know, I still like. Yeah, it's like when you, it's like when you growing up, like, and you don't have yeah. much, like. He's okay. Anything yeah. else around you, you just yeah. trying to make do. Like we'll you just trying yeah. to have a have a good time and live life. That's and it. Uh, yeah, I, I could definitely relate to that. I think that's why we connect. Because yeah. I mean, when yeah. I was when I was younger too, it was like I didn't know where my next meal was gonna be. Same you know, I, like you said, you you had oatmeal, man. Mom was. Mine was literally just noodles and chicken, like boiled noodles and chicken in the oven. Like yeah. that was my go-to meal yeah. when there was nothing else out there, yeah. you know? And so um, that's why I could definitely relate with you on that, sure. that aspect. You know, growing up, it was, like you said, it was tough. I want to talk to you about that too, you know? What was like a motivational factor for you growing up? Like what did you see, like who inspired you? Like. When you uh, saw, when you sat there, was it like a self inspiration? Like you want to get out of the situation? Yes. Because that was how that's how that's I was. That's like it. I was like, look, I, I, I need to get out of this situation. Yeah. Like I need to go off and I need to do my own thing and yeah. you know try to make something of myself because I got a lot of homeboys back at you know back at the crib that's they, they ain't doing much of anything yes. and it's sad but at the same time it's like I don't want to be in that position yes. right you know I, I want to better for my parents better for my family so like who was that that inspiration for you or like what drove you to be Dorino right now like yeah. you know Mr. Yeah. Mr. Miami like what, so, what was that uh, to be honest uh, I just want to get out of that situation I knew yeah. I knew I couldn't do it I knew I could do it and uh and then we started doing jiu-jitsu, right? It was even a good story that my daddy was have a mechanic at home on the backyard. He was fixing the inside of the cars, not not the engineer, but the the the, like the, the leather seats. seats and all that. Yes, yeah. and we were helping him out. And one of those clients had a gi inside. Yeah, and then we found out that he was a jiu-jitsu uh, teacher. And then my daddy said to get paid for the service. He asked for us to for start training. Yeah. And then we start training. First day we came back, we like it, we love, we gotta keep training. And my dad said, if you really like it, you gotta start training hard. Otherwise, you just get three months for free. After those three months, they don't have money. And then we start training super hard. And then eventually he let us stay, we compete, we kept going. That gene eventually broke. That guy tried to go to a politician, didn't work. But he brought just me and my two brothers. Yeah to the biggest gym in the city and he asked the coach to, to let us train for free and the coach let us train for free so that's when we really start training super hard and then I had a couple guys in jiu-jitsu that I really like it but I I was always a fan of my big brother he's yeah. a Navy SEAL now in Brazil okay 
and I was always a fan of him. And then he was training, and he got me to train. He was training hard, and he got me to train. I was just kind of copying him, everything that he was doing. I was doing, then he was, he started becoming a sporting partner for the main guy. We used to see those guys in the magazines, on TV, Vitor Shaolin, big guy. My brother went there, started training with him. And then he beat the crap out of my brother. Like he slapped me. <laughs> he just did grappling and slapping. Bro, he, but I was such a fan of my brother that I didn't talk in a better way. I said, man, you're trying to Shaolin today. Like, wow, like we got. Bro, we got super excited. We got on the bus, one hour and a half home. Yeah. And we got home, and then my dad went crazy on him because we were broke. And then I was like, I was young. I was, I think I was 14, maybe. My brother was 16. But he could start working a little yeah. bit. Just like he get an extra job and extra money. My yeah. daddy would go crazy on him because he got to start working. And that was the first thing, like, right after that day, that day that he trained with Shaolin, that I was so happy, man, he trained with the guy. Whenever we got back home, my daddy was just waiting for us, mad, because he got to help out. He's the big yeah. brother. If yeah. he doesn't do the example, me and my younger one, we're not going to do it. So he started yeah. pushing on him. Then he stopped training and started working. And then... That's when you got the inspiration. You're that's like, when he I, got it. I got to carry on this legacy. Yeah, I that, have to because he, he can't. And yeah. then he ended up going to the Navy and he did a test and then he passed to officer. Then he go to a different state. And then the way I see back then was just like, man, he wants to be a fighter so bad. Yeah. And then I was just like, man, he cannot do it anymore. And I kind of felt bad, but I changed it that. And then I, I got a lot of, I got way better on that, changing that, being mad or being sad and using that as a fuel. And I was just like, bro, he can't, but I can't. I'm going to make yeah. it so far. I'm going to work so hard. And then that's when I started. Then I started winning all the tournaments in the city and getting better and getting better. And then that was my first thing that I said, I got to make a change, you know. I know he can't, but he will, he will not be able to, but I'm going to be able to, and I'm going to make it happen. And then that was... That was the first drive that I had to start going after crazy and training and getting better and going to the tournament. That was that was the first one. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's that's like you don't know like the time and effort it takes as an individual to like reach that level, right? It's mm -hmm. like my brother's putting on for me. Like I'm I'm the oldest of mm -hmm. of two I got two younger siblings. A lot of pressure, right? Yeah. So it's like I'm the one that's like you know, what is he doing, right? Like, your mm -hmm. older brother's like, you're mm -hmm. watching your older brother. Like, yeah. that's how my siblings were. Like, man, like, I got to do what he's doing because yes. if, that was it. if if he fails, then I got to carry that on. Or if, like, he can't do it, then I got to carry that, that, that next level up. And so I could definitely, like I said, I could definitely relate to that story, man. Um, so let me ask you this question. What was your big UFC break? Like when you when you started winning all these tournaments, like yeah. and and going around state to state, city to city, and you know you you know you can whoop ass. <laughs> you beating everybody left and right. I mean, like what was like that UFC moment when they finally called you? I know it was like quite some time, but yeah, you know when so, you when you got that call, it was was bro it was a long process, like. First, I was getting very good at jiu-jitsu only with the gi. Yeah. Just like judo, but we keep going on the floor trying to get a submission. And then I was going, going, then I was going to, the, I was dominating the whole Brazil, I was doing good, but whenever I was going to the words, I was almost making. So 2005 was the first words that I did, words jiu-jitsu tournament. And I, got, I think it still got robbed a little bit, but I got third place. And then I was changing the belt. I was leveling up. So I got a brown belt. Mm -hmm. And I was shoot, I was winning every other tournament. At worst, I was second place twice on the brown belt. Yeah. First time he was here, uh, first time in Brazil. Second time, the words started coming to California. So 2007 was in California. Second place, got back to Brazil, got my black belt. First year is a black belt, lost. Mm. Like quarterfinals. Second year is a black belt with second place. Then we're talking about 2009, second place, 2010, third place. 
eventually in 2011 I became a world champion yeah. but that was that perseverance because I was almost there but when I lost to this guy and then I beat that guy after I beat this guy and then man how come I lost to this guy on the yeah. big one so then 2011 I decided to now I'm gonna do MMA I made it I became a world champion in Jiu Jitsu and I started doing MMA started training in 2011 in 2011 I couldn't get a professional fight because I was it was all around people know that I was Jiu Jitsu world champion yeah. I just beat one of the Gracies it was a big thing 2011 did one amateur fight 2012 I started my professional career 2012 January my first fight 2014 I got to the UFC and even when you got in the UFC you just got in the UFC you're like you're like a rookie you just yeah. got there yeah. so you still gotta you still gotta make it again you know you just you just got there yeah a rookie just got on the NFL all the guys are there Harhinha is there Tua is there everybody's in there but it's like but it's, it's crazy because like being a rookie in the NFL is like look you a rookie, you, 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 you know, you, you young blood, right? And like, you got guys that have been in the league, like I'm year nine right now. Yeah. So it's like, you got guys in the league right now that have families, yes. that have kids, that have wives, you know, and you gotta like, do your ultimate best to help them out yes. in achieving an ultimate goal, which is the Super Bowl, For right? Sure. So it's like, I know that feeling when you coming in as a, as a rookie, it's like, uh oh, well, I, I gotta fight these grown grown ass men that yes. like it, I don't know how it's gonna be, but I gotta be up there with them. So yeah. crazy. I got that twice. When I got my black belt, all the black belts being there already, I'm just a hooky. I'm just like, man, it's gonna be so hard. And then eventually you made it. And then when I got in the UFC, it was the same thing. You got in the UFC 2014. And that was years trying to make it, trying to break it, because you still gotta still gotta make, you know, still gotta Yeah performing that people oh okay that's that guy's good you know yeah and that was a lot of testing i was three and in the ufc i was 10 and over in my career and then i got my first loss and then i win and i lost again and that was a lot of pressure because ufc is by contract right so we got four fight deals and then you kind of gotta win all three and then they don't let you do your fourth fight. We renegotiate right here and then you get four more fights. And get to a level that you got a lot better, then they give you six fights, seven fights. Then you kind of, that's when you make to the big leagues. But I remember it was 3-0, and I got a new contract, four more fights. Yeah. Then I lost my first loss. Then I win my, my, my fight on that contract and then I lost again. And when you lost your third fight, it's very dangerous. Yeah. Because sometimes they might test you. Okay, let, do the last fight on your contract. Yeah. Whenever you do your last fight, it's a lot of pressure because if you lose that fight, they might not they might keep not, you. Yeah. Most of the times they don't keep you. So I, I lost, I win and I lost, and they got to do my last fight. And that was when my guy said he was in yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a lot of pressure on that fight. And then around that time, I started doing a psychology of the sports. Yeah. And she was helping me big time. And then I was training so hard. And I was, and then we started doing the sessions. And I say, I need to win the fight. And they say, no, you don't need. And say, what do you mean I don't need? I need. I say, no, you don't need. And I say, no, I need. Otherwise, I'm going to lose that job. I want to. I want to become a champion. I want to fight. Yeah. And they say, but just change that. And that was when I start changing. I say, oh, okay. If you lose, let's 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 go to the worst. If you lose that fight, what's gonna happen? I said they're gonna kick me out. But then I'm gonna do maybe two or three more fights. I'm gonna get back in. Yeah. Or if they don't want me back, I'm going to the other big organization or whatever. She said, "See, you're gonna starve." I said, "No, I'm not gonna starve. No way." <laughs> See, so you don't need, what do you want? What, what? And I say, oh, I want to win that fight. Yeah, yeah, don't put your need. You want to win that fight. And I say, yeah, I like that. And when I, just that little change. That little switch. The little switch, it helped me big time that yeah. I was on that fight. So confident I was going to be that guy. And that was my first UFC knockout. Mm. That was one of the big moments. Then I got two more fights, but I was cutting a lot of weight. I got a short notice fight. When I decided to move up, they give me a short notice fight, and I fought this Russian dude. Mm. Everybody, when they say, "Well, who you want to fight? You want to fight? You want to fight that Russian?" Everybody like, "Oh, that Russian guy." Yeah. 
in this rush, I was moving up from lightweight to welterweight. That's the vision that I that I like yeah. the most, that I feel better. I don't need to cut a lot of weight. This dude was 20 and no, undefeated <laughs> Russian. <laughs> and I got the call. I just, I fought here in, in the Sunrise, UFC Sunrise. And I decided to move up. And I tell the UFC, my next fight is going to be on, on the welterweight division. And I say, okay, no problem. One week after, I was going to Orlando. My kids was competing in jiu-jitsu over there. On my way to Orlando, we stopped on the five guys. I'm eating a burger. I got a phone call from, from my manager. Hey, UFC's calling you. They have your first fight in the welterweight division. You want to fight this dude, bro? This record is 20 and 0, but I do believe you can beat him. He's just on the record. So when they mean just on the record, he fought, he got a lot of easier fights yeah. to make that record. You want to fight this dude? And I say, let me look. 20 and 0 is crazy. Let me. And then I look and say, man, that guy's tough, but I can beat this guy. You like, yeah, you sitting there, you're like, yeah, this guy's yeah, tough. He's 20 and 0, but I can beat he ain't this me. Guy. Like, I can't he's beat not me. Yes, like, no way. Yeah. And then I say yes, and I got the fight was in Uruguay. In two weeks, yeah. one week training. Next week, I was already traveling. Got there on the five week, and I beat this dude. That was when that was, I think that was the moment they would see, "Whoa, this guy is different." And then I beat this guy, this dude. One month after, they call me again, and they say, "Hey, we got Gunnar Nelson. He was on the Conor McGregor guys. We got Gunnar Nelson in Denmark." In two weeks, you want that? I say yes. I just got a Russian <laughs> to any no good enough in Denmark. Let's go. And then I went to Denmark. Like again, one week training. Next week, you went to Denmark, beat this dude, and I think those two fights was my change. You know, like, yeah. And then look, this what people don't understand <laughs> is like in this whole fighting world. Like if you are able to get like just a week's notice to go and fight somebody like that is tough like you you like that's like me saying like okay i got a saturday before i go and play somebody on sunday right off like, season sometimes of the they season, don't know like, if i'm training if not i'm i'm training like you training but you're not like preparing for a I'm not a, yeah, yeah you're no. not preparing for a certain person like for but you to be able to do that though, he would do the same i would though. i ain't gonna lie i, I know would. I'd be like, gonna hey, go playing? okay hey, it's saturday hey, okay hey, well, it is what we it got is. a game for you in two weeks what are you gonna say i'm gonna be like okay where we at well, who i'm playing against I mean, I they know better it. be ready he's the same mentality i know yeah, he would say yes yeah. for sure. but the thing is though is like even this year right you man listen you had how many, like three fights in four three months? Three fights, five months. Five man. months? Bro, that is crazy. That was crazy. That's why I got hurt. No, that's not why you got hurt. Uh, that, that is not I why you got hurt. I kind of pushed it so much, you know, it was too much. It happened. But. The dog in you, <laughs> that's not, the, you know that's not the right excuse, right? You know that's no, not it. Yes. You know, you're like, nah, I just, it's just fluke, right? I just got hurt because it, bro, I'll, you. I'll, I'll make the same decisions. If yeah, they call but, me, but, you want to fight this guy, if you win, you get a title shot, for sure. Hey, two weeks notice. You want to get that game? If you win, you go Super Bowl. What are you going to say? Oh, babe, I'm in there. There's, there's no I'm, way you're going to say no. No, I'm not saying no. I got hurt, but it happened. Yeah. I was just like, for sure, I would say yeah. yes. But the thing is, is like, it's so tough for y'all to like literally, to that in that span, I think you're like one of the only like fighters to ever do that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I know there's multiple fighters, yeah, but we got... There's a couple of fighters, but like you're up there with them. Five percent of the guys that get this short notice, they don't care. They fight a couple guys. We don't get. Yeah. Maybe less. Maybe three percent, two percent that they will That's do crazy. that. But yeah. Before we get back to the pod, I gotta tell you about HelloFresh. These meals are so good. My family loves them. And the best part, you get America's number one meal kit shipped right to your front door. So you don't have to go to the grocery store. With my schedule as crazy as it is, I don't have time to plan out my meals for the week. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for me so I can come home and have a delicious meal in 30 minutes. Listen, I know what you're thinking. This sounds too good to be true. It's probably super expensive to have meals shipped to your home. Think again. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and less expensive than takeout. That means less stress in your day and more money back in your pocket. Oh, and by the way, there's 40 recipes to choose from every week. So I promise you'll find something you like. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Rahim and use code 50Rahim for 50% off plus free shipping. 
That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Raheem and use code 50Raheem for 50% off plus free shipping. So like what was like when you were going through that whole process though, like how did you make that switch? Like what was that switch? Like you were like, okay, well they just called me for another fight. You know, I, I got to go do it. I know yeah. that I know inside you're like, no, I don't care who you could line me up against anybody. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. fight them. For sure. But like knowing that you only have a certain limited time, like uh, how was your mind at that time? Like how'd you flip that? But but that was that was the thing that was the thing because like let, 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 let's put you in that position. I love to put you in that position. <laughs> you always put me in these positions. Let's put you in that last I ain't game no fighter, of, but hey, I yeah, last game football. of the season, right? Yeah. Was the the Buffalo Bills right last year? Uh, no, the Jets. That was the Jets. Well, the, well, technically Buffalo because we played them in the playoffs. Yeah. But the Jets was the last game yeah. I played there. Yeah. So after the Jets game, you in amazing shape, right, bro? Yeah. You want to win the Super Bowl, so you come in the season. Yeah. You like maybe one of the best shape of your life. Yeah. You? Yeah. And then a week. That was the thing. That was a week after that game. They call you. And they say, hey, in two weeks, if you beat this guy, if you win that, if you beat this team, you're fighting for the Super Bowl. My first thing for is, I, I love that. Let me just check with the coach. I know I'm in shape. I know I'm, one week. I fought yeah. last week, Miles Vidal in Miami. This week, <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. Let me just... Yeah, they're like I don't want to make that decision alone. If it's only if it's up to me, it's yes. Yeah. And I call my coaches. So I have I have a team. Like I said, I have a psychologist. I have a nutritionist. I have strength conditioning. My fighting coach. And you got to put all them on the same yeah, page too. And I call all of them. And they all love it. They say, yeah. man, you're in amazing shape. Let's go. We don't need a long B camp. I think it was more the way I sell it because I say, hey, if a win is a title shot, no one's going to say no, you yeah. know. I no, kinda, you can't say no. But we all say yes, and eventually I got hurt. But like I said, it was two big lessons that I got on that fight. Yeah. The first lesson, I was so frustrated because I won that title shot. I still won that title shot so much, and I put so like, much energy for that. That, that mentality, though, bro, you yeah. gonna get it. I promise Soon, you. My brother, it's, it's, it's gonna coming. happen. I, yeah. I know it's gonna happen. But I won that title shot so much, and I was ready. And when I got that, and I got hurt, that feeling that I couldn't do anything, I was trying, and I said, man. And I was fighting with myself because I thought about quitting for a split second. Shit, I cannot do it. Yeah. But right away, I say, we might not, but we're going to keep trying, bro. That was me talking to myself. There's no way we're getting out of this fight without trying. So let's go. And then I was trying. And I was so frustrated because I, I was in the octagon, one win away to get my title shot, and I couldn't do anything. So that was so frustrated. It took a little time, but eventually, a couple of weeks after the fight, reflecting, seeing, watching the fight multiple times again, write down my mistakes, see what I did, what I could have do, could have done differently. And I was just like, you know what? I'll do the same thing again, bro. If they ask me, I'll do it. Yeah. And the best thing that came out of that was if with a one arm, Fighting a number four, three of the world. I was number four, he was number three. With one arm fighting this guy. We fought five rounds. I got hurt in the first round. I fought four more rounds against this guy. He's a top contender. With one arm, we go to a decision. He couldn't do much. I'm just like, man, when I'm <laughs> when I'm back with two arms ready, You're gonna be no right. one's gonna stop me. That yeah. that that was my my mentality. Listen, I was I was at that fight too and like I was I was so proud of you. Like I was just like because you could tell, right, if if you watch like I've been a huge fan of UFC for like ten plus years. So like I've I've been watching. Like I said, before I told, like I told you before we did this pod, you know that I was one of those kids that like like to fight. Yeah. So like you know, 
I can't do that anymore, right? I'm 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 fighting a different aspect. I'm fighting for yardage. You're beating those guys up. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm trying to, but um, yeah. So you know, I've I've been a huge fan, and and when I went to that fight in Jersey to go watch you fight, you know, I was I was in I was under the impression like you know this guy's he's handling business like you always do, right? But like you had a whole different switch on you, like I and we all can tell as as a true fan and that as true competitors too, you, you could see how somebody like yourself would just go in, no holes bar, don't care, don't care about his body and just wants to go out there and like compete, you know, and, and for you, man, I wanted, I wanted that fight so bad for you. It's true, I, I, I really I wanted know. it so bad for you. My wife wanted it just as bad. Um, my wife's a black belt in Taekwondo. You know, she's up there in the she range knows, too. She knows, she, yeah. she knows about, <laughs> she knows about things and what it takes to, to compete in that world. And, uh, to see you get hurt on the shoulder and still compete for five rounds. I mean, bro, you got that dog in you. You got that dog in you. Coming sure. back, coming back. Yeah. Still, and, still uh, recovering month and a half from fully yeah. back in uh, but, crazy uh, comeback season next No, no, the comeback year. season is going to be nuts. I'm, yeah. I'm excited. I'm, I can't wait. I'm hoping that there's a fight down here in Miami at some yes. point with you in it. Might it might be. It might be. I mean, we. Let's, I'm going to it. You know, I'm gonna be For there. Sure you me, go. I'm, I'm gonna be locked in with you. you I'm have to. Me, me and me and Miss 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 Burns is gonna be up there in the yes. stands together. The kids. I might bring my kids. For <laughs> sure, you have to. They probably the won't know much about there. it, but yeah. Now, speaking of family, let me ask you this question: When it comes to your family, right? Um, what is like? one thing that they truly admire the most about you, you know, even though as, as a, as in regards to fighting, you know, when they go and see you fight, I know they get a little anxious. They get a little nervous. My wife will do the same. You know, she, she gets nervous. She doesn't like when I get hit. Um, and, and it, it brings a whole side of you, right. Yeah. That you truly, you truly feel that empowerment when your family's there. It's like another notch. So like, what is what do your kids do that inspire you on a mm -hmm. on a daily like you know like oh yeah no nah, these are my kids like yeah. I'm doing the right thing as a as a father as a husband they they bro they do a bunch of things that I'm so super proud of my my family my wife she's a warrior bro yes yeah. Speaking like, of, let's let's talk about your wife. Yeah, she's we, also she's a warrior, she's also bro. a badass too. Now, yeah, she fought MMA before I, me. I know before <laughs> me, 2010. I, like like I said, my debut was 2011. She has an MMA fight amateur with with her gear big, but 2010. Yeah, she fought Muay Thai. She Brazilian national champion multiple times. <laughs> And she's a beast with the kids. So those kids, they they go online, they go good. Otherwise, they, they, she go, oh yeah, she they go know crazy. What <laughs> but bro, so me being a fighter, my wife being a fighter, those kids has a competitive nervous on, on those guys. They so Joshua now is playing flag football. Yeah, and he he works so hard and he does everything. He's so athletic. He's been playing very good. He played wide receiver and quarterback, and he's. They, they playing so good but Pedro now he's playing tackle already he's yeah. on Boca Braves he's doing good he's doing tight end he's doing a couple trying different positions shoot the D line tight end playing a little bit so but I love those guys first I love both of the guys hard they they good people yeah but they love to compete that all day at home is a pure competition with these guys oh, so oh man but on the nice way, but I just, they just like who I am. And that's a thing that I still having on me that one day coming from the Masvidal fight. Yeah. And uh, I was picking up those, my kids on school and they leave, they, they bike to the school just a couple corners away, Boca West. So, and Joshua told me something that I'm like, wow, now I have to watch out even more what I say because he said every one of his kids watch my fight with Masvidal. Yeah. And every single one watch my post-fight interview. So that's when I'm like, oh. Yeah. All those kids are watching now, yeah. too. So. See, that's the thing, too. It's like when you in the limelight, like, it's, like for me, you know, like 
you do gotta watch what you say like, every be, single thing every, everything because kids they pick up on that stuff like everything my kid my oldest is four Gunner right and he is like the smartest kid that's it that like it, he's my kid but I know that he's the smartest kid he's literally the smartest four year old that I know wow like he'll watch my games and he'll everything. be like daddy's out there or like he'll he'll see me on TV if I'm doing a press conference and he's listening everything and, and Every then I'll word. come back to the house and I'm like Hey Gunner, how you doing, buddy? Like, did you see Daddy on TV? And he's like, Yeah, Daddy, did you say that you you um, love football? And you ran the guy over. Like, I'm like, Oh my, God, I gotta watch what I say. Like, this kid's really listening. They they they're, they're like, sponges, bro. And the whole kids on his class, I was just like, Wow. <laughs> I hope it didn't add pressure to him though to your I, kid. I, I just said one kind of bad word wasn't that bad, but I said shit. Yeah. And that can I say that now? Oh yeah. no. No. Uh, so my <laughs> wife go crazy and say, ask your mom. <laughs> but every little thing that I said, they watch. But I love those. I love my kids. They very, they very into sports. It's it just kind of like a mini me, you know. They yeah. like love the fights, love the sports. So competitive. They work super hard. Now, you, let so, me ask yeah. you this question: Are you gonna put them in like jujitsu? I did. I did a little bit because yeah. I had a thing that I don't have a daughter. I have two boys. Yeah especially if I had a daughter me and my wife was always like especially a woman a girl she have to know how to defend herself my, so my wife she fought so she, same thing she for fought sure. she was fighting grown men when she was doing taekwondo See? and like her her dad put her in because like like you said it, to defend he gotta, gotta defend herself and yes like they started out when she was like five four or five like she she was in it right away Boom. And so, like, that's yeah. how she got the 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 skills and the abilities Same, to, yeah. like, you know, uh, hey, look, it, I might seem like I'm soft, but trust me, you don't want to yes. get to that point. Like, <laughs> please don't even get it. If you get it, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Bruna. Bruna is small, but she can, bro. She can fight. Yeah. She can fight, fight. Yeah. But that's why I got the kids in jiu-jitsu on the beginning just to learn to defend they compete a couple of times they did a lot of wrestling they did kickboxing a little bit of MMA but I just I don't know I just think fights I love to fight and if they love to fight I'm gonna push okay you're gonna fight yeah. if you love it let's do it but I was like please you got a different sport see that but that's the thing with me is like I'm Everybody asks me, like, are your kids going to play football? And I'm like, I'm not going to push it. Same. Like, I don't, I don't want to push football to them. because but like, if you can pick. If, if, if they can pick, I want them to play golf. Same. Like, you know, baseball mean. here and there, tennis. Like, go get a sport that you're not going to get hurt. Yeah, yeah. Because I know, and like I said, when I sign, when I get a contract, I know I'm going to fight. And I got a contract and I sign it. I even is even a thing that I have that takes me a little bit to sign. Yeah. I'm gonna sign it, but I'm like, I know things can get dirty on that fight. Yeah. I know these guys are pretty tough, high level. I'm signing, but accepting that okay, I'm gonna sign it. But I know things can not go my way. I can yeah. get knocked out. I can hurt. I can get it. so it, it's. It's a mental thing for me to sign that contract. Right. So if I could choose my kids to not do it, no, go do, go be a lawyer, go do, play golf, go play a little bit different. But I have the same mentality. If you love if you fighting, love what you do. I'm gonna I'm gonna support yeah. you as much as I can. But I'm glad they like football and then and yeah, they, I, I, yes, I'm, I'm coming glad. I'm coming to one of their games like you have to, they crazy they yeah, <laughs> I, told, I told you last time I was going to come when, uh, when I when I told them I got your phone they said can I text you and say <laughs> wait let, no I'm, a, let I'm, me get a I'm definitely going I told you I'm, I'm going to come to a game and I'm going I'm going to surprise them but I'm also be a critic I'm going to be like hey look you could have ran a better route. Yes, I love that. Come if on, man. Do it, you yes, you could have done better. That. I know I you got to do you. But that's it's, just a competitiveness, it's right? It's great <laughs> because it's not me saying. Yeah. I love it when it's not me saying. See, he said it. Nah, I'm going to I'm, I'm be the bad. I'm going to be the bad. I'm going to be the bad uncle. I guess I'm going to be the bad uncle. No, they that's love it. it They're going to like you. <laughs> Heck so, yeah. Like I said, if, if they love fighting, I'll push, I'll support. But I'm so glad that they like football. It's still 
not the safest one, but it's something. Yeah, we 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 met all the friends of of ours the day of of the game that you guys did great. That I sent my wife to go, she didn't want to go. <laughs> and he, and one of the 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 ladies, she said, "No, my kid is not playing football." And I said, oh, "Really?" She said, "Yeah," because the the guy's dad got a concussion a couple times yeah, and he yeah. still have a memory problem. And I was just like, I'm a fighter. How am I going to say to my kid that he's not going to play football because he might get a concussion? Yeah. I might get a concussion in training. So <laughs> if he loves, he's going to do whatever. If he says, oh, I want to play lacrosse, I want to play football, I want to play, I want to fight MMA, I say, whatever he wants to do it, you're going to have my full support. Heck yeah. Well, shoot, I mean, if we could be there for our kids, you know, we're going to definitely be there and, and support them. I mean, my wife jokes all the time. She's like, if my son wants to be a cheerleader, he's going to be the best damn cheerleader that's he it. could possibly be. And I'm like, hell yeah, that's, that's what I'm it. talking about. That's it. Say yeah, it. Gotta that's be. It. I like her. I like you, either, you, either in, you either all in or you all out, right? That's it. Like, you can't just be halfway in and then be like, no. eh, this is ain't it. Like, no, if you love it, if you want to continue to do it, strive to be great. Strive to... To best. that, you know, that next level because yes. you got to look yourself in that mirror, right? Yes. And, and so that, that's not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, you're not going to like that at all. So let me ask you this question. How's, how's, the, how's the shoulder doing? Bro, shoulder is almost good. Yeah. I should get clear in, in two weeks now. Okay. But it's still not 100%. You right. know, it's still like, I can do, I can punch, I can do all the boxing, kickboxing already. But my bread and butter is the grappling. Yeah. I still cannot grapple the way I want, and I still cannot wrestle the way I want. It's literally three things that are still hurting a little bit. I still cannot post. If I got to post back a little bit, I'll do dips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still cannot do full dips, you yeah. know, still hurt a little yeah. bit. So, but that, I talked to the doctor, I talked to, to the PT team, you just keep getting stronger. Take yeah. my time, don't post right now, avoid yeah. that. They, it's even nice the way they said, you know whatever it hurts, whatever hurts, give a little kiss. Don't let it hurt like sharp yeah. pain, just give a little kiss. Yeah. If you just kiss, it's fine. So that's where I'm right now getting the shoulder very strong. He said two weeks, I'm clear, but I believe Month and a half, like yeah, you got to you got to push that extra a little yes, bit so that way you and sure. you a hundred percent. That's for sure. That's how I was with my knee when I got back from my injury. I had damaged cartilage, so like wow. cartilage, literally a, the size of a quarter, ripped wow. out of my knee. And um, you know, when like I got back, right, very yeah, big, right? yeah. So when I got back from my injury and I had surgery and all that. Um, the doctor was like, yeah, you'll, you'll be out about six months. In my mind, I already switched it. I was like, you, you can count that as, you know, nine months until I'm fully, fully, fully back 100%. Same. So you do have to give yourself that, that little yeah. extra time. To, even to get that confidence back, I don't want to step there and have that feeling that I cannot throw. No, whenever yeah. I'm there, I want to throw You don't want to have no worries everything. about it. Everything. So I believe... He said two weeks, but I believe six to eight weeks to start training. Yeah. And I'm just going to get to the next fight whenever I'm, like, training with the best guys in my gym, doing good, feeling good, no no doubts about my arm, in great shape. Then I'll tell, hey, now I'm ready. Get me a fight. Heck, yeah. So let's let's talk a little more about fighting. Um, there's there's a couple matchups coming up. Um and I know that you you in the welterweight class, you know, you you got your eyes on uh what is it? Leon? Leon, Leon versus Kobe? Leon versus Kobe. Yeah. Jeez. What you what you think about that? What what's your what's your out outlook on that that fight? Uh, Leon is a beast, bro. Leon yeah. is that guy that's good everywhere. I remember like. I was sitting in my in in, in there in the yeah. dining room yeah. watching a fight on on the on the laptop. And when he had knocked out what you call it, Kamara, Kamara, yeah. and I was just like, "Wow!" Like this wow. guy, he he and, he has tenacity. And one of the crazy things that I start studying that fight to see because Kamara was beating him, taking him down, and Leon has a 
he's a cardio guy which yeah. he has a great cardio yeah and then look at he was getting so tired i was there yeah that was salt lake city but salt lake city has the altitude the, yeah the, the altitude and then i got there and then i was watching then and then after the fight he gave an interview he said bro that was my worst performance yeah i wasn't and, feeling good i felt so tired and i did what i did there's no way the guy beat me again and uh, but i sometimes guys say it but sometimes you can see they don't mean it when i saw that guy i felt that he was meaning i said man that guy's gonna beat tomorrow so i kind of saw him beating tomorrow again now he's fighting kobe like i said Leo is a beast but kobe is a great wrestler crazy pace too amazing cardio but he hasn't beat a guy's coming for winning you know yeah yeah i just believe Leo is too much i think Leon's gonna beat kobe and uh, if everything goes okay, still a lot of things to happen, a lot of fights going on. Yeah. But I would love to fight Kobe if that's the result, you know. So we'll yeah. see. But I think Leon is still a champion. Yeah, he he's he's a good he's a good he's a good competitor. I mean, I, like I said, I remember watching that fight and he had that 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 leg kick. Yeah. And I was just like, he brought so much to that kick, and it just came out of nowhere. But think about you, you on a bad day, and you're not feeling good, and we can see that you're not feeling good, but still last, at the last minute, you yeah. pull up a victory, that uh, means a lot about you, right? Yeah. That that, that means about the, the mentality, the will. Like everybody was already dogging him. Yeah. Like he I was, was almost leaving because I had a fly. Yeah. Uh, a uh, red eye fly from Salt Lake City back to Florida at night and the guy said hey you gotta live in a little bit and was just like two minutes to go and say no no wait for the fight wait for the results and they say oh come on it's gonna win okay and then I'm watching them boom oh, like oh my god everybody stood up it was like the whole world just erupted we like wow yeah no that that, that fight was crazy I, like I said I was, was everybody funny. erupted everybody was like oh my god I, what what just happened and it was like a split second like it was <laughs> like was crazy it was, yeah it was that, was, that was definitely the one you needed to go to that For was sure. definitely one you would like that to be there you were there was, too i was there was there was nice Ooh. good experience like i said i was almost leaving and then wow yeah crazy thing like we're saying about kids that you bring your kids to, to your games i bring my kids for the fights kamar Usman's daughter was there oh yeah Bro, and I hear her crying. That was oh, that broke my heart. I, I can't like, even imagine, bro. Yeah, like, because I can't. at least we got boys, right? You got yeah. boys. I got boys. I mean, when when in in Jersey, when the decision came down to Bilal, I look at I look at your wife, Mrs. Burns, and I, and you could just tell she was like she wanted just as much as you did, yeah. like. I she know was, that she, she fights with me. Yeah, that's she why fight, like, she's she in fights. the ring with you. You could tell. And, I, and that, that fight was, it was. I'm glad you brought that one back because uh, I was doing a, a, a we call kind of double kick, karate kick, the one that you fake a low kick and you kick with kick, the other yeah, leg. Yeah. And then I was doing that kick a lot. I said, no, you know what? I'm gonna throw that kick. And then Joshua saw me training. Daddy, daddy, gonna do this kick? I said, yeah. If you call me, if I listen to you, I'm gonna do it, but you gotta call it. And then he said, how am I gonna call it? I said, you can call double kick, you karate kick. And then I say, do it. And then he, the karate kick, daddy. Wait, 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 okay. so you can hear that in the crowd? I can hear, I can hear. I can, oh. Whenever the crowd is like loud and crazy, like if I knock him down, if I do something crazy for like 15 seconds, you cannot hear anything. Yeah, yeah. But, if he's between uh, the crowd is not that we're not doing much They're I can hear everything yeah so I hear he karate kick daddy karate kick and I, and I landed it wasn't as clean yeah but I landed it was nice that that was the thing that he was saying the whole week you lost but when I asked the karate kick you did and say yes I did oh man so next time when I'm, Those, when I'm in the stands I'm be like hey karate kick yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> be right next to the kid that kids. was funny hey, but kid. on the same time Kamara's daughter Kamara's daughter was crying but that she break yeah. my heart oh, wow I, bro I can't imagine like yeah. boxing UFC but, fighters yeah. like but like you said I, we were just saying that when I grow up was a lot of hard times you said yeah was a lot of hard times but we keep the good times and the bad times so yeah. that's a lesson to that for the kids going to the fights a lot of parents don't like it they like it 
I'm not going to be the one saying, no, you're not going to my fight. Yeah. No, if yeah. you sure you want to come, you know, I don't want to lose at all. Yeah. But it might happen. You still want to come, I might get hurt. Okay, you want to come? No problem. So they come because my growing up, I saw a lot of things too, a lot mm -hmm. of bad things. Like I said, sometimes you walk in the room and then so many like candles and I'm like, what is that? I, and then I, oh shit, they cut the electricity. I'm not yeah. even gonna ask. Yeah. So we know no TV, no nothing. And a couple of times we were open, like I said, open the refrigerator, nothing. Just, just the, like the old meal. So that just a little flour and water. So that was it. Yeah. So I know that, but like I said, even with that, I was happy. I was having a lot of fun with my kids. We were playing outside, playing soccer, playing everything. We saw that was bad, but that didn't that didn't stop us like to to still having fun. So that's why I bring my kids in. Like, like for sure, at that moment was hard for her. Yeah. But whenever she saw her dad coming up, telling her she was good, I think for sure it's a, it might be a little trauma, but I think it's good for the kid to see a, a little bit of everything, yeah, you know, and yeah. then they figured it out. Yeah, that's and. That's how I am right now. Um, before, I didn't, I wouldn't say I didn't allow my family to travel to the, like the away games, but like this year, I was just like, screw it. Like yeah, my kids, sure. my get, my kids are young. You know, I, I want them to get the experience for that sure. that I get to live through. You know, priceless, yeah, I, priceless experience. Just, just, just to go out there and like to have fun and to like be like, sure. I went to my dad's like away game when he you know, beat the Buffalo Bills in a playoff game or like, you know, was going up against one of the one of the top teams and, and we won and we celebrated and the confetti was down. Like those moments, that's what you cherish for. Those are the like, moments. Like you hosting the belt up, like and your kids right there in the ring with the you. Moment like, that I'm looking that's the moment to. that is gonna live forever. Like forever. And so that's that's why you gotta have your family be a part of, you know, something that you're you're building. You're special you're you're building something special that a lot of people can sit back and be like, I don't know what it feels like. For sure. You know? But that that's people when they're, they, oh, what, what's your motivation? What's your drive? It's for that moment. Yeah. I want to be earning the belt and my family right there and getting that. That's, that's, that's my vision. That's what I see. That's what I'm making me wake well, you up. You me pumped up, go man. Go to that freaking cold plunge and go to the training. That's what get me going, you yeah. know. Yeah, you got you get me pumped up. I can't. I'm excited to get you. If back, you visualize bro. you getting the Super Bowl, getting the trophy in your film, that, that's it. Oh yeah, hosting that. That's Lombardi. the vision. Yeah, that's the oh, vision yeah. that you need to see. Heck yeah. All right. Well, hey, if you got any questions, I got man, a question for you I right mean, now. Yeah, here we go. Now I'm <laughs> a in the funny hot one. Seat. <laughs> a funny one, nice one. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, you you in the game. Yeah. Right. And the game is rough. They beating each other. They try. They they see. You can feel when the guys are coming rough. Right. Yeah. They really want to hurt you. Yeah. So we on the game. Game go crazy. Fight is gonna break down. It's gonna get messy. Right. You can pick three UFC fighters <laughs> to fight with you to beat the other team. Who you picking? Three UFC <laughs> fighters. <laughs> oh man, this is a good one. <laughs> Oh, for, for sure, I'm picking you because I know what I'm gonna get. I know what I'm gonna get I'll out of go, you. I'll go. I'll go. Don't need to be me. Yeah, nah, I'm, I'm gonna going get, for sure. I'm gonna bring you. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna bring. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna bring somebody from that. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring John Jones. I like yeah, John Jones. Sure. I like. I like his. We tenacity. need some heavyweights in yeah, there for yeah, sure. Bring some heavyweights, and let's see a, a smaller guy. Um, oh man, what's his name? Oh. Um, starts with the his last name is a V. Uh, Big guy, small guy, small guy, smaller guy. He v. just he uh, he just it? fought. I don't know if he just fought. Hold on, uh, hold on. I'm about to look it white, up. White, black, white, ball head, got a beard. Oh, Volkanovski. Yeah, Volkanovski. Yeah, that's the champion I'm, for yes, sure. I'm bringing Terminator, him. Terminator, the guy's I'm, a beast. I'm, I'm bringing him. I'm bringing for him. Sure. That's that three a good guys. Pick. That's that three guys that, that I'm bringing. That's a so good pick. I'm bringing you, Jones, and Volkanovski. <laughs> that is a good pick. That, that, is that wow. a good That's a good lineup right there? Very good. John Jones is the GOAT. Best, yeah, of, yes, yeah. best ever. And no, Volkanovski. Okay. How'd you feel when he got back? 
in the UFC? Oh, I had no idea how he was going to come back because he was a couple of years off. Yeah. And he was moving up in weight. So he was always like 220, 220. Yeah. He was big boy. Yeah, nah, he was big. But he was cut into 205. And he was lean but looking good, fast, super strong. Yeah. Crazy reach advantage against everybody. A beast. But then he moved up on the weight. But then he put a lot of weight. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I mean, a lot of weight. He had a little belly. And then I'm like, eh. But, bro, the skills he got. Think about the guys that were really good. And now he got stronger. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think right now no one can beat him right now. He got a big fight right now, a former champ. Stipe. Stipe Miocic. That's going to so be listen. A, a crazy fight. MSG. Yeah. yeah. So, listen. My wife is from Cleveland. Yeah. And Stipe is from Cleveland. And I used to work out with his trainer. I met I met Stipe multiple times. Nice. And he's, he's a, a cool real guy. good dude. Like he, funny he, guy. He's like us, right? He's, he's like funny, low, crazy, low, nice guy. You know, lower guy that like yeah. just wants to go about his business. Yeah. Wants to put in the work and wants to yeah. prove everybody wrong. And that guy right there, he has a mentality like us. Like I said, he nice just guy. he wants to go out there. He just wants to dominate. No, he's like, yeah. He doesn't care what people say about him. He he don't care. He's a firefighter. You know, he he's still heart. he's still full time firefighter. Yeah, full time firefighter. Crazy, yeah. He loves it. Like he he yeah, yeah, yeah. he loves the community. He loves everything about That's that. Nice. So um, yeah, I'm I'm. It's gonna be a good. Uh, I can't wait to see that fight That's for gonna sure. Be, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna yeah. be there. Where's that at? MSG November. Oh, okay. November 12, I think. Okay. 11 or 12. Yeah. November I'm not gonna 6, have, I'm 11. not going to put you on the spot on my early picks I and stuff his, like that. I love Stipe. I love Stipe. Stipe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we both, we have the same sponsor, Most Energy. We did a couple of periods together. Yeah. Nice guy, family Super guy. nice guy, family guy. To be honest, as a family, as a guy, I like way more Stipe than John Jones, but a fighter... I think just Joe, John John is just a John John. He's, he's a beast. He's a beast. It's going to be a crazy fight. Steve is the only one that might have a chance. They got crazy, a chance for Crazy him. fight. Yeah. Heck yeah. I think that... I I think that that's Steepy gonna be was a good pick. If you're picking Steepy like he on on that street fight, he definitely is the underdog. He's the underdog yeah, on that card. But, but I mean, I asked you about those three fights. Steepy is a good pick too. Yeah, yeah. No, he is. He is Steepy definitely a good pick. Take a couple guys out. Either like, him, him or John Jones, because Steepy. What I like about Steepy though, Steepy ain't gonna quit. Like no he's way. not gonna quit. No, he no he is not gonna quit at all. No like, way. He's gonna claw fight. He's a wrestler. He's gonna have a, a black eye. He can't even. He can't even see he out of his care. eye, and he's he still care. gonna fight. Like <laughs> man's gonna have a, a broken arm and still trying to swing with it. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, nah, yeah. I, I definitely like that pick in my like top three one. too. Yeah, I like that one a lot. That's a crazy fight. I'm also a fan of um, uh, she's uh, the female fighter. Um, Dude, she just she just dominating right now. Um, God, what's her name? Uh, we got a couple good ones. We got Joanna was good. She retired. We have she Wayne does Lee. a little twirl when she wins. She does what? Oh, twirl. Valentina, yeah. Valentina Shevchenko. Yeah, Shevchenko. Right? Yeah. She she lost. She lost her first last fight on the paper, but she won the fight. Yeah, yeah. They're going to do a trilogy. Might be February in Mexico. Those two fight. They're she's fighting good beast. right now. Both of them. Both yeah, of those Alexa fighters Grasso, are fighting She's good. from Mexico, but yeah, but Valentino won that yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. She's crazy. She's yeah. good. Yeah, she's not. She, I have her in, my, in that top, yeah. too. <laughs> she's good. She'll, hey, she's she'll good. choke somebody out now real she quick. She's easy. No, Hell she's yeah. a beast. Yeah, she'll jump right on somebody's back and go crazy. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> she's quick, too. She's a beast. Yeah, she she's is, a beast. So. Well, which another fighter that you like to watch? You like Dustin Poirier, Justin Gagey? Gagey's, uh, Gagey's good. Gagey's a beast. Yeah, Gagey's, crazy, Gagey's, right? yeah he's good, too. Uh, uh yeah, there's, there's a lot of there's some good fighters, man. Yeah. Including yourself, I'm yeah, I'm a big fan of you, man. You can fight, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I man, you got that connection. I I know, you know, you, you work your tail off. You just like me, For low sure. key, don't want to do too Ooh, much, nice, and yeah. just go out there and whoop ass, man. For sure. so, well, shoot, man, I, I appreciate your time, man. If you got any questions, any more questions uh, other than that. 
Let me see. You ever went to Brazil or no? No, I ain't never been to Brazil. Gotta go to Brazil. I gotta go. I gotta go. I, I was just about to text you and ask you about that. Like, hey, how's Brazil? Because I might ask you. You gotta go to Brazil. Uh, me bro. and you gonna go together. Yes. <laughs> yes. You gotta show me. I like I'm food, a... bro. So we gonna. Yeah, what food do you like? What's your favorite food? It don't matter. Any Anything that's good, <laughs> I like. So we definitely got to go. What's your favorite food? It don't matter. Everything that tastes good, I like I'm, that. I'm telling you. I like that. This is my guy. When we done with these renovations and I got this backyard going, listen, no, gonna, I'm gonna yeah. be throwing down on that grill. 100. Yep. percent Let's do it. And bring Let's, the family over. We all gonna they can play it. and the kids can play in the pool and stuff Let's like that. We are gonna listen to music, have a good time, man. So, Let's, what's your favorite place? A place that you like to go? Um, what do you mean? Like, if you have a, a quick vacation, you have all you have. Ten days free, a place that you like to go, there, like or a the place kids, that you want to go. Yeah, no, nah, the, the kids honestly like going to the Bahamas. Oh, Bahamas. Yeah, I they never like, been there, bro. Never go. been to the Bahamas. Never, bro. Had, Are we going, bro? It's an up I and have down flight. Several opportunities, but always something come up. Oh, I got a fight. Oh, I got you've been around the world, though. You've been, I've been everywhere. Yeah, Thank you, God, you, like you, just because of. More because of jiu-jitsu, not because of UFC too. Yeah. But I've been whole Europe, Asia. Lately, lately, not a month ago, I was one weekend in Boston. Next weekend, I was in Singapore. Mm. A week after, I have, uh, uh, I got to speak here in Fort Myers. Yeah. And then I was in Australia. And then I was back here, but just back to back. Boston, Boston, Singapore, Fort Myers, Australia, and I came back. This man is traveling, y'all. And he's, then I went, and, and I forgot. And a week after that, I went to Liverpool. And then I'm here. Now you're here. How long are you going to be here for? I'll be, I'll, <laughs> I'm going end of the month, I think October 31st, I'm going to Brazil. They have a UFC in Brazil November oh, yeah, 4th. Yeah, yeah. So November 4th, I'll be in Brazil. And I come back because I'm going to MSG for the UFC on November 11th. He's a big, he's a John yeah. Jones fight. Yeah. Big fight. Brazilian guy that beat Easy here, Alex yeah. Pereira, Porta. Yeah. He's fighting for the light heavyweight title. Ooh. In, in MSG and I have a, I'm sponsored by Monster Energy so we have a Monster Energy appearance that's gonna be cool oh heck yeah well shoot if we able to get out there man in Brazil we definitely gotta go check yeah, it out for go. sure we man. gotta bring it to Brazil we're gonna have so much fun there Brazil is nice especially if you're a food guy yeah Amazing food in Brazil. We're gonna be on the beach somewhere, just yes. just enjoying some good food. One hundred percent. Here we go. All right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate it, man. Pleasure, Mr. Guys. Mr. Miami himself, the new Miami himself, let's do it. Gilbert Burns, y'all, and I appreciate okay. you, brother, man. My pleasure, but thanks for having yeah. me. It was let's, a pleasure. Let's get together, and, and I know that you, your kids gonna come to the game. You gonna come to the game. Wife gonna come to the game. We got we got to see you on the field sometime, man. Let's do it. I let's mean. do it. And, and I'm also pop up on your kids and give. Oh, let's do I'm it. gonna give them some lessons. Kids gonna get crazy. Let's do yeah, it. Heck yeah. Well, appreciate you, brother. Thank My you for time. being on the podcast, man. My pleasure, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for tuning in to this episode with Gilbert Burns. Hope you guys enjoyed our conversation. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on anywhere that you find your podcast. And follow us on social media for highlights on the show. Until next time.